it in your libraries. And we're here today to share a special preschool story time with you. We're going to be looking at the book called Searching for Cicadas that's been written by Leslie Gibbs and illustrated by Judy Watson. This is a special book because it's been nominated by the Children's Book Council of Australia for a Book Week Award. But before we get back to learning all about cicadas and hearing our story, I would love it if you would join me in our acknowledgement of the First Nations people. So, if we pop our hands to the front to get started. Here is the land and here is the sky. Here are my friends and here am I. We acknowledge that we learn, play and share stories on the lands of the Kulin Nation. Now let's have our hello song. Hi, hello and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hi, hello and how are you? How are you today? I hope you're good. And I hope you're ready to hear all about cicadas. But before we look at them, have a little think. Summer's just around the corner. What are some of the sounds that you think about when you think about summer? For me, this next sound is definitely one of them. Hmm. So, who makes that sound? You've probably guessed already. It's a cicada. Hmm. That one was actually a greengrocer cicada, like we have in the picture here. It's the boy cicadas that make that sound. But have you ever wondered how they make the sound? Some people think maybe they rub their little legs together or perhaps their wings together. But it's actually a little bit different to that. This is our picture. And you can see here there's something called a timbal. Because we're imagining we can see inside the cicada's body with this picture, because it's all inside. And the timbal is what makes the sound. It's got muscles that make it go in and out, a bit like an accordion, or the bendy part of a straw. In this little video, Jason's showing us, using a straw, what it might look like if we could see the cicada's timbals and they were slowed right down. And Michelle's showing us how they look going a bit quicker. You need to imagine what it would be like if they were going really, really fast. Because the muscles in the cicada's little body make them go in and out. And that makes that surprisingly loud summer sound. have a little rhyme about cicadas? I was a little bit surprised to find out there weren't a lot of songs and rhymes about cicadas out there so I sort of had to make a little one up about a friendly cicada. So this is going to be our little cicada who's going to land on me all right. A lot of the cicadas in Australia are probably about that big anyway. Okay a friendly cicada landed on me. He shed his old skin and then sung about summer to me. Okay, I think before we do anything else, we should probably have our story. So let's go. I mentioned before this one's been nominated for an award. It's actually a special award called the Eve Powner Award. And that one is for fact books made for children. This one has got lots of interesting facts in it alongside a lovely story. Today, we're going to read the story. So let's go. Searching for Cicadas by Leslie Gibbs and Judy Watson. In the summertime, Grandpa and I go cicada watching. I collect the tent and sleeping bags and Grandpa packs the cooler. 
There they go. It's like cat and dogs watching them pack up. We put our camping gear into my wagon and walked down to Apex Reserve. Last year we found five greengrocers, three yellow Mondays, and one flowery baker. This year I want to see a black prince. Grandpa says they're rare as hen's teeth. You heard anyone using that expression? Rare as hen's teeth? It's a bit old fashioned one. We pitch our tent and wait for the sun to set. The cicadas are so loud, I cover my ears. Grandpa says it's the male cicada that makes all the noise. It's calling for a mate. It's a very peaceful looking camping spot. Most people search for cicadas in trees, but the real secret to finding cicadas is to look for the cicada nymphs on the ground. Our favourite spot is in the wavy grass under the old grey gum. You've probably guessed a nymph is a baby cicada. I found one, I say. It's brown and soft and very ugly. I think it looks like an alien from outer space. Can you see it there? It's a beauty, says Grandpa. I watch as my nymph climbs onto the trunk of a gum tree. Grandpa says the nymph lives underground for years before it digs its way up to the surface. Then, like magic, it changes to an adult cicada all in one night. There's some pictures here of the little nymph underground, then coming up to the surface and then finally climbing up the tree. When the sun sets, I turn on my torch. Now we watch and wait. Look, Grandpa, one of the nymphs has split its skin. It wriggles and pushes its way out. First the head, then the body with legs and wings. It's all wet and its wings are shriveled. By morning, it will be dry and the wings will be long and hard. Time for bed, says Grandpa. I'm so excited, it's hard to sleep. Here it is, looks like morning. In the morning, all the nymphs have split their skins. Their empty shells still cling to the gum tree. See, you might be able to see those. Some empty shells. I count four green grocers, three flowery breakers, and two yellow Mondays. There we go. That's a greengrocer. That must be the flowery baker and the yellow Monday. But there's one more. It's a black prince. I show Grandpa. He can't believe it. He grabs his camera and takes a photo before it flies away. Everyone will want to see our photo of the Black Prince. We will be famous. Grandpa looks delighted there, doesn't he? Grandpa and I lie in the cool grass. We watch the cicadas buzz and whiz all afternoon. Grandpa says they only live for a few weeks and they have lots of work to do, like finding a mate and laying eggs. When we pack up, there's one more cicada surprise. The Black Prince lands on my hand. His wings tickle my fingers and I laugh. Then he whirls and spins and disappears into the afternoon sun. We're both sad to see him go. Grandpa says if he finds a mate, we might just see another Black Prince next year. 
I can't wait. And that's the end of the story. Did you notice some of those cicada names? We're going to have to talk about those a bit more. Well, adult cicadas can still be pretty hard to spot, even if you can hear them. So the first thing that you might see, rather than the nymphs or the adults, is this. That is a picture of the Malta cicada skin. So a good place to start is having a look in your trees in your backyard, and they don't have to be gum trees. I used to have them in a maple tree. Um, yeah, so have a look for the skins, and you might start finding them that way. And for those who like really gross things, if you're ever standing under a tree on a bright sunny day, or even out in the open, and you get some little droplets on you that feel like a little patch of rain, but there's no clouds, that might be some cicada wee, <laughs> because it's clear just like water. If you do spot an adult cicada in Melbourne, chances are it is going to be my favourite, the green grocer cicada, which is also the loudest Australian cicada. <gasps> They're very beautiful close up. You can't see his lovely wings here, but you can see he has got two sets of eyes. Some simple eyes in the middle and some compound eyes on the side. So that's a bit different does make him look like a bit of an alien too, doesn't it? And along with my friend the greengrocer, you might spot one of these other guys here. These ones can be found in our area. That one, you can probably see why he's called the red eye. And the other one here, a golden haired firetail cicada. So they're supposed to be able to be found in our area as well. I've only ever seen the green grocer though. Along with the names we heard in the story, there's some other really cool cicada names. There's ones called Chocolate Soldiers. Um, I think we might have heard about the Blue Moon. There's one called a Double Drummer. There's a Hairy Cicada. There's one called a Cherry Nose. There's a Whiskey Drinker, a Golden Emperor, a Bladder Cicada and a brown bunyip cicada and an eastern sand grinder is another name many of the cicada names originally came from children that's probably why they're so cool and there are hundreds of cicadas out there some that still haven't been officially named and some that are yet to be discovered so if you're really lucky you might be able to find a cicada that nobody else has identified and give it a really cool name of your own. And that brings me to today's activity. I want you to create a cicada species for us. So you can do that however you like. You can build it with bricks, you can make it with Play-Doh, you can draw it, um, anything that you can think of. But it needs to be your own unique little cicada and I want you to think of a cool name for it. <gasps> I've got one to show you. Hang on, I'll just reach into my little box of goodies here and see if I can take you out. Here she is. Okay, have a look at that. I made it with some Lego bricks. All right, so my new cicada species has got, hmm, oh, a bright glowing tail. It's a sort of a limey yellow green, isn't it? Got green wings, brown and grey in the middle, and two glowing orange eyes. She's only got two legs as well, which isn't right for a cicada, but it'll do for now. So what shall I call her? I think I will call her... Those orange eyes remind me of safety warnings. Don't often... It's a safety colour, that orange, isn't it? So maybe she can be a lion-tailed safety eyes or a lion-tailed warning eyes. I think that's, that suits her, the lion-tailed warning-eyed cicada. Okay, if you can make a cicada of your own, like I said, draw, make it of bricks or of dough, 
and get your grown up to take a picture and maybe you can pop that in the comments and we can see what cool cicadas you come up with. Okay, we'll just pop it back in the box for now. Now, I told you before I had a little bit of trouble coming up with songs and rhymes about cicadas. Now, a rhyme was one thing, but I thought I'd better try a song. And I looked and I looked and I found songs about spiders and rhymes about ants, but not cicadas. So I had to think a bit harder. And then I came across an old song I hadn't heard in a long time, which is called La Cucaracha. That's from Mexico. And a cucaracha isn't actually a cicada. A cucaracha is a cockroach. But I thought this song might work for my silly little ditty about cicadas. So <laughs> I might need some help with this song it's got some finger snaps in it. Can you practice a little bit of finger snapping? Because you're going to have to help me sing this song. All right, it's called Little Cicada. Let's see how we go. Little cicada, little cicada, climb on up the home tree. Little cicada, little cicada, shed your old skin with glee. Little cicada, little cicada, Fresh and green as you can be, little cicada, little cicada, fly away from your home tree. <laughs> Told you it was going to be silly. <laughs> Thank you for helping me with those finger snaps though. I hope you've enjoyed listening to Searching for Cicadas and sharing this story time with me that's been all about these curious creatures. And I really hope this summer you listen out for some cicadas and maybe go searching for them too. But now, it's time for our goodbye song. Are you ready? This one's with a little wave. Goodbye, goodbye, we'll see you soon. See you soon, see you soon. Goodbye, goodbye, we'll see you soon. At another story time. Thanks so much for watching. For more stories and videos, you can go to our website at cclc.vic.com gov.au and there look for the libraries at home link and click on that one. You can also search for us on YouTube. Just search for Casey Kid in your libraries. See you another time. Mm -hmm.